Okay. This is it. The big one. That's what she said! Bigger than Zelda. Bigger than Mario. Bigger than Jesus. Pokemon! man! Pokey man was the pokey of the man in the lake. Though not as big as Animal Crossing, apparently. Damn! Remember when Pokemon first came out? I was hooked. That shit was my life. It was everywhere. I cannot think of any other video game that came as close to Beatlemania as this classic Critter Collectathon. And after Pokemon Go and the Switch games, the 20 year old brand has proven to still have gallons of juice left to squeeze. Yet despite being one of Nintendo's most lucrative franchises, Pokemon could use the most massive makeover. And I mean that criticism in the most constructive way possible. That's what this show's all about. There is so much progress that could bring the series up to modern standards, and I don't want the Pokemon formula to change. I just want it to modernize or futurize or whatever. The core of the series should remain intact. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Pokemon isn't broke, but it's old and rusty and runs a bit like a hoopty compared to modern AAA games. It needs a new engine, a new paint job, and some premium gas. Shit, it's premium, dude! I want it to be the same game told through modern technology and game design. The series has always been relegated to dedicated handhelds that have less power than a dying Voltorb. But the Switch offers Game Freak not only more power than they've ever had, but as much as they could possibly need. They have so much to take advantage of, and they were aware of the pressure on their shoulders. And I hope that they would strive ambitiously. Cause this was the time to do to Pokemon what Breath of the Wild did to Zelda. And there were rumors of doing just that. Progress is cool. I was so optimistic when I made this video almost four years ago. I thought they were really gonna go all the way. But then the Let's Go games were revealed and we were like, That's the appetizer! And then Sword and Shield were revealed and we were like, What's up? And then the Chibi Diamond and Pearl remakes were revealed and we were like, But then like right after Arceus was revealed and we were finally like That's what we've been waiting for! But we were still kinda like It's like playing with my emotions! Because why would they give the big overhaul to what seems like a spin-off? Why suffer us all these other little problems? Why does the literally wealthiest media franchise in the world not bring their main product up to modern standards? Hire more developers with more modern experience? green light a bigger budget, seek out fan feedback and criticism and requests, because right now, the best Pokemon game on the Switch is new Pokemon Snap. Oh, snap. Let's start with the basics. 1080p in docked mode, 720p in handheld mode, solid 60 frames per second. Enough of this 900p bullshit. Why would you build a console and not utilize all of its specs with your own games? More letter spaces. Multiple save files. Analogous sound design. Also, if you're gonna keep running one of the big never-ending anime, just give us cutscenes and voice work already. Lay the overhead projection to rest and give us the controls and presentation of a typical 3D adventure game. The main thing that everyone, including me seems to want the most is for Pokemon to be a part of the game world. Back in the day, developers had to translate their vision into something that could be rendered on a limited piece of hardware. When making the original games, they probably envisioned it more like the anime. But you couldn't pull that off on a Game Boy. But those days are done. Technology is at a point where the literal conception of Pokemon, or any game for that matter, can be created without compromise. Now is the time to decalcify those pineal glands, because shit's about to get real. The one thing we all wanted to see is Pokemon walking around in the game world. Even if we don't possess knowledge of game design and programming, we all shared that same mental image. And I don't even know why I'm bringing this up because they actually came through on this one. But I still want to bring it up because this video is a remake of another one I did. And also, there's something else I wanted that they didn't do. Basically, the whole thing required the sacrifice of a primary mechanic in many RPGs. The random encounter. They spread them around the open world just like we wanted, 
But to engage them, all you have to do is just walk up and touch them. I thought that if random encounters were gone, they'd end up making more realistic ways of engaging them because this is where the avenues truly start to open up. Excavate fossils in the desert, solve a puzzle to download a Porygon, agitate a flying bird to get it to swoop down to you, give Snorlax a classic wake-up call, find a pseudo-woodo among the trees, fish for specific water types with a specific lure or bait, imagine using a Remoray to catch a Waylord. Ghost Pokemon could vanish and mess with you. Catching legendaries could be huge, elaborate side quests. Some Pokemon act like the current ones in Arceus start up a battle, throw a ball or a rock, and some Pokemon of a more volatile nature could ambush the player, kind of like a random encounter. There are more possibilities than there are actual Pokemon. Engagement is the mechanic to replace random encounters, and that's basically what they did. I want it to be more multifaceted, not just making physical contact with them and then being transported to the battle screen. Which brings me to the next point, when you do decide to engage a wild Pokemon or another trainer, the battle should take place in the exact spot that it was engaged. No more separation of the overworld and battle screen. I picture it kind of like Okami, or kind of like Arceus. And with the Switch's graphical capabilities, I expected the lushest battle animations to ever grace the series. Okay, so that's wild Pokemon, but what about the ones you already caught? Interacting with your own Pokemon shouldn't be relegated to cheap minigames. Let us let them out of their balls and walk around with us. And not just one at a time, so they can interact with each other. Give us contextual buttons to pet them, feed them, play with them. When we use Surf and Fly, let us actually fly and surf with them and make them appear on screen as they are, not as some generic representative sprite. If they're supposed to be actual living creatures, then present them that way. The world of Pokemon and the Pokemon themselves have always been so separated by random encounters and battle screens that they sometimes felt more like Yu-Gi-Oh cards than actual living creatures. And these are not unreasonable wishes, because if Chrono Trigger did all these things on the Super NES, then what the f This is probably the most controversial change they can implement, so I wouldn't be angry or surprised if they gave it a hard pass. Battling is the core of the game, and they might not want to change that much. Another reason is that we aren't playing as the Pokemon, but as the trainers giving them commands, and turn-based combat is actually the most logical way to illustrate that. But damn would it be cool. It would require a totally different approach. Turn-based combat is all about planning, management, and number crunching. Real-time combat is about timing, reflexes, and hand-eye coordination. Turn-based is about strategy, and real-time is about skill. And as much as I love some turn-based games like Earthbound and Paper Mario, most of the time they're boring and unrealistic compared to real-time action. Sometimes I feel like I'm being given a f***ing math problem. So what other directions could they take? There's Action RPG, which offers the satisfaction of real-time combat while retaining some of that RPG identity with health points and stats. There's fighting games, which can make use of Street Fighter-style combos or single-hit sequences like in Smash, but 3D like Tekken or Pokémon. Another option is something like the Final Fantasy VII Remake battle system. But what about the hundreds of moves? How can they contextualize all these moves, and would there still be a limit of four per Pokemon? Well, here was my idea for a control scheme, which coexists with the control scheme for the trainer, kinda like character controls and vehicle controls for GTA. It seems like a lot of work to individually tailor all these Pokemon, but think about it. That's what they do at the start of each new gen. All the models and animations. They even claim to have a future-proof HD archive of all the Pokémon. The only difference would be changing the mechanics from random encounters and turn-based to engagement and real-time. There's still some peculiar design hurdles like abilities and experience points and evolving that, coupled with the magnitude of a move like this, makes me doubt it could happen. But. Damn would it be cool. Maybe they will do it someday. I remember an article that said they were trying to do something like Pokémon. Maybe there will come a mainline game in which we can play as the Pokémon themselves. But either way, can we choose which ones to send out first? Enough of this first-in-line gets auto-deployed bullshit. Personally, I couldn't care less about customization compared to everything else. That's just confetti to me. 
potpourri. Bourgeois! However, this is an RPG where that stuff is important to many fans, and it's actually a perfect match for this series. Games used to be more like films, in the sense that there was a main character and structured story whose role the player had to adopt. But now, a lot more games start with a 30-minute character maker. Nintendo is no stranger to this. Link is a Link, Metroid Prime immerses you in Samus's helmet, and so many of their games have a naming feature. But even these are still characters on their own, much more so than whoever you choose to be in Skyrim or The Sims. That's what Nintendo's known for, their rich catalog of characters. Pokemon, on the other hand, is one of their few series where the protagonist is a completely empty vessel meant to be filled by the player. That's what she said! So customizable avatars are the way to go. Facial features, body type, gender, pigment, age, clothing, accessories, custom Pokeballs, and whatever else they can think of. But yeah, I don't care. I don't give a shit! It makes Digimon look like Pokemon. Remember when Pokemon was actually kinda hard? Rivals lived up to their crude names, gym leaders would actually impede progress, the Elite Four would give you a quadruple bypass, and red. Red. Classic case of foot stuck in ass. Maybe it was the relatively smaller number of Pokemon, but I remember needing a thoughtful and fleshed out team of high level mons and like 99 revives. I don't want to be able to breeze through every trainer on every route with just my starter. I want the series to challenge the adults who grew up playing it. The only way I can think of is by raising levels of both wild Pokemon and other trainers. This would require a lot of grinding, but in a Pokemon game as ambitious as the one I've been babbling about, grinding would not be a chore. Kinda like backtracking in Metroid. So yeah. More macaron. At the same time, simplifying things would be very welcome. All the Z-moves and Mega Evolutions and Regional Forms, I never got into it and I know there's other fans that also feel like it's a hollow way of advancing things. Even berries have gotten so crazy that they merit their own spin-off farm simulator. They're all meant to add strategic layers to battling, but I still plow through the games without barely using them. When I say more simple, I don't mean less challenging, I mean not confusing and useless. Marches and macaroni! What do I mean by streamlining? Improving the design of the device and the bag. Each game had its own device, each one a different machine that mostly served the same few functions. It would be cool if they just f***ing picked one already. A proverbial Pokemon smartphone. Well, is the Pokedex not the perfect choice? It is the original device after all. They can even justify it in-game by having Oak be like, Oh yeah, I sent out a huge fucking update. Pokemon profiles, a tracker, map, radio, phone. And a camera, because duh. Think of a piece of fruit. Takes a picture of it. Just to up the immersion, it can also serve all the technical functions, like saving and options, all wrapped up in a bold, user-friendly interface. Now the bag should take the organizational model of Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and just improve on that. I really hate how they try to simplify it further because it just causes a lot of clutter. These are the item categories as I see them. I think together these would make the dopest menu system since I will create more. Worlds. They're file folders. Stop calling them worlds. Multiplayer has gone on like it always has. Local networks and online to trade and battle. But even before the Let's Go games, I couldn't figure out how someone could hand a friend a Joy-Con and have a battle. Whose Pokemon would they play with? Well, you gotta lend some of those out also? Can they just pick whatever they want? Because the games were always about bringing in your own team that you already had. I couldn't figure out how to implement the local co-op capabilities of the Switch, and I was interested to see what the people who make those decisions were actually gonna do. On a side note, people have been contemplating a Pokemon MMORPG since the very beginning. And to help express my feelings on that, here's Korn. I say N-O to M-M-O. It sounds ideal on paper, but microtransactions and trolls and Nintendo's family-friendly policing will ruin it. Honestly, the idea isn't bad. We are. Human nature sucks and we wouldn't handle it well. We would ruin it and it might also ruin us. I haven't had a chance to shower for a few days. I've been gaming like a loon. 
With the nearly 1,000 Pokemon there are in a game as ambitious as the one I've been babbling about, the end game potential is huge. Filling out my Pokedex is something I usually do while watching TV or something, but this might deserve my full attention. However, even that won't fully cut it this time. Pokemon postgames are often longer than the main campaign, but they're gonna have to really step their game up, Mario Odyssey style. It cannot just be about assembling a zoo of imprisoned animals, most of whom you're never gonna utilize in battle. How cruel is that? Nobody wants a fucking Bidoof or a Klefki, or 28 friggin' unknowns, but we all got them locked up somewhere in box 24. Obviously hoarding these poor creatures in a digital menagerie will remain the centerpiece of the post-game content, but what else can be done with Pokemon? Breathe some life into them by doing more than just magical cockfights. Breed them, study them, and destroy the capitalist American government! And a Pokemon Snap side quest would be so awesome that it could eliminate the need for that to be its own series. And then... Of course, there's the big request. Gen 2 objectively had the best post-game, not just of the series, but of games ever. It was an entire second game where you traveled to the original region explored three years prior in real time and game time and faced off with your original self. Whoa! Usually you have to wait to become an adult to feel nostalgia for your childhood, but that was the one time I felt nostalgic as a child. And that brings me to my final bulletin. One of the oldest and most popular fan wishes is a game that combines all the regions. At first, I thought this was a fanboy fever dream that was technologically out of the question, as much as I wanted it myself. But now, it seems like a totally possible and logical solution. Every gen has to introduce a new crop of Pokemon while incorporating all the old ones into the new region, without any explanation to their nativity. The maps stay the same relative size, and the Pokemon population density is reaching Indian proportions. Too many people! As a result, too many Pokemon Pokemon inhabit the same patch of grass, the version exclusivity list gets longer, and some don't even make the cut. My point is that there are too many Pokemon for the one region per game model to persist. There are eight regions so far, and they can all be rendered on modern hardware. It wouldn't be as taxing as it sounds because they don't have to design a brand new world, but merely take existing designs and render them on new hardware. They can even future-proof them like with the Pokemon models. And Pokemon that originally came with a region can be made native to that region. Region nativity will spread them out in a way that makes sense. But you know what? One world would be cool, and it's possible now, but it's not necessary, and they'll also never do it. But you know what I'd like almost as much, and they may, might, hopefully, maybe do? You know how you got to explore Kanto again in Gen 2? Am I the only one who wants to explore it a third time? And Johto after that? I'm not talking remakes. I mean brand new games set in those regions. And no, Let's Go doesn't count. I never get sick of exploring Hyrule or the Mushroom Kingdom, so why does Game Freak think I'd get sick of these places? If they were to change and advance as many things as I discussed, then something familiar needs to anchor us. Just as Pokemon Go banked on nostalgia by only starting out with the original 150, a mainline Pokemon game could revisit the regions that started it all. Instead of all regions, the two that hold the most nostalgic value and are already connected would be reasonably designable and still large enough to contain all 1,000 Pokemon. All the 20-something fucks like me to whom the Switch was mainly marketed and grew up on these games would eat this up like a fried Magikarp. The all-region model is both possible and tempting, but if they just send us back to the motherland... That'll do, pig. That'll do. But let's see what I said in the original video. Ah, but who are we kidding? We're probably getting a new region and a remake of Diamond and Pearl. Yeah! Oh, thank you! Thank you! When reviewing all I babbled about here, I noticed that I made the naive and blasphemous request of making Pokemon less of a JRPG and more of a WRPG. Burn him! But hey, Nintendo showed the world how to really make a sandbox game. 
Maybe the next lesson they'll throw down will be the Western role-playing game. Pokemon is a system seller no matter what. Sword and Shield prove that. They failed to meet most of these expectations and still found success. But if they did come through, if they did give it that Breath of the Wild treatment that so many Nintendo franchises seem to be undergoing, imagine how much more successful it would be. This is the coolest thing you've ever done. If they had to pick just one game to give a massive Breath of the Wild style revolution to, it's the mega popular multi-billion dollar maniacal behemoth that is Pokemon. The things I propose seem so logical and obvious to me because that's how I saw it through my third eye as a child. And I know you did too. You have the money, you have the resources, and you have the time. Because I was willing to wait, and I still am. Make this game, make this whole series all that it can be. If you want as many people as possible to buy a Switch and accompany that purchase with a Pokemon title, then I guarantee that if you meet or exceed these expectations, you will catch them all.